Well, it's Monday. It is the 8th of May and thanks for clicking on to Yes, a Global Weather and Climate Report, Part 2 of Edition 40. There was so many things that I wanted to cover in yesterday's video. I did think that the content I did provide to you was valid enough that I wanted to keep that and add on a second um, video with um, with a look at the situation that I was talking about, the controversial um, theory about underwater volcanoes warming the oceans from bottom to top. Therefore, those warmer than, uh, you know, the increased heat release from the Earth's crust into the ocean adds more moisture to the atmosphere and adds an increase in temperature around the planet. It is a complex subject, but a very, very interesting one as well. The CO2 argument, folks, is, to an extent anyway, a valid point as well. But a correlation between rising CO2 and the temperature does not seem to match up particularly well. Like I said in yesterday's video, I'm not um, professing to, to know it all. I'm not professing to be an expert in any of the subjects that I'm talking about, but merely wanting to raise a few points and add to questions that many people have with regards to climate change, global warming, and whatnot. There is a lot of hysteria. There is a lot of fear-mongering, I believe, out there when it comes to the warming of the planet. But I believe it is within the realms of a uh, cyclical um, aspects drivers that are, are um, you know both cooling and warming the planet and I do believe that eventually we will turn the corner we will see the oceans turning colder we will also see the earth's temperature dropping as well with time whether that's in our lifetime or not I don't know but anyway uh, you can follow me on Facebook Twitter YouTube, of course, and as well as that, markfoganweather.com. I have recently released a new article with regards to the unusual cool that continues across India and Pakistan, but equally we've got new all-time records breaking left, right, and center over southeastern Asia. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail as well. So do check out yesterday's video, so part one, edition 40 of the Global Weather and Climate Report, a big, big um, you know, subject when it comes to underwater volcanoes. I believe in all of um of Earth's uh volcanoes, seventy to eighty percent of those is underneath, uh, you know, the sea. So of course we know very little about what's underneath our ocean surface. Of course, and indeed. Uh, in recent times, there has been a discovery of another 19,000 volcanoes that are underneath the ocean. So therefore, it raises the question, why is the oceans warming up the way they are? I believe we have reached a new benchmark in recorded history of, I believe, 21 celsius somewhere in that ballpark anywhere where the average global sea surface temperature has reached 21 celsius for the first time on record of course we've got areas that are exceptionally warm compared to average and we've got areas exceptionally cool compared to average case in point being off the california coast we've seen record breaking cold waters in this region here, of course, the PDO, or Pacific Decade Loss Relation, is firmly negative, while we've got, of course, the developing El Nino. Uh, models are indicating a moderate to strong El Nino, but uh, it is rather unusual to have a strong negative PDO and a strong El Nino um, simultaneously. So it's going to be an interesting one as we go forward, of course, very, very warm waters over the and surrounding the Indonesian archipelago, of course, and uh, you know, surrounding the Southeast Asia mainland, we've got well above average temperatures of the ocean, and of course, the temperatures on land are reaching record-breaking levels. Um, you know, national records as well as local records have been falling. Very warm waters over the North Pacific. Uh, interestingly enough, though, we have got cold waters. Uh, against the Russian coast and as well as that the Chinese coast if you notice here 
but we've also got some very very warm waters uh you know you know coinciding with cold uh, waters it's quite a complex warmer versus cold and average sea surface temperature profile within the northwest pacific as you can see here um, and of course we've got exceptionally warm waters over the tropical and eastern atlantic ocean um so yeah um let's get to it so the tonga um volcano that erupted in the beginning of january 2022 um makes me wonder has this raised the bar in terms of the ocean temperature do we see such a quick response i don't know but what impact did this have in not only releasing a tremendous volume of water into the atmosphere has that led to uh, various extremes in terms of weather around the planet now i do believe it has significantly cooled the stratosphere within the solar the, the southern hemisphere and indeed we did see a strong uh, sudden stratospheric warming or a warming of the stratosphere within the northern hemisphere um as well so all these aspects are all things that we need to consider but of course when we have got all these uh, underwater volcanoes some dormant some active um are we seeing this release of heat from the earth's crust into the ocean subtly warming the oceans like i say from bottom up that is a very very interesting but also i think somewhat plausible uh, plausible um you know theory overall does this distribution of warming within the cracks underneath our uh, you know of our ocean floor is this subtle release of heat being distributed in different ways around the ocean surface of our of our planet therefore it's of course increasing the water vapor into the atmosphere and enhancing the warming of 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 uh, you know of of earth's atmosphere so you can see here where all these um you know underwater volcanoes are situated of course um you know linking um new zealand up through tonga of course to the east of australia uh, through the indonesian archipelago as you, as you can see here uh, up the east coast of china and of course we've got from the, the philippine plate all the way up through japan and linking up to russia and of course we've got the uh, this uh, chain of underwater volcanoes within the aleutian islands as well and uh, down the west coast of north america and south america here so um yeah is it just carbon dioxide or is there more to it than just that uh, that is the question that i'm certainly raising uh, in these global weather and climate reports uh, let me know in the comment section below exactly what you think with regards to what I'm saying. Remember, I'm not saying that this is the case. I'm not saying that I'm an expert. I'm not saying I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm merely raising the point that there's got to be more to it than just carbon dioxide that is driving the system, driving the warmth, driving the unprecedented heat that we're seeing in so many parts of the world uh, at this moment in time. Sorry, I do apologize for that um so yeah um let's have a look at the extremes that are taking place at the moment around the planet of course in the uh, back on may 4th the earth seen its hottest temperature in the northern hemisphere of 2023 uh, of 47.3 at madam in senegal at the same time we've seen the coldest temperature on the planet of 2023 and within the southern hemisphere of minus 74.8 at Vostok station in Antarctica, which is quite interesting stuff, of course. Let's have a look at the um, at April. Uh, this is from uh, Brian Brett Schneider, uh, based in uh, in Alaska, and this is looking at the April two meter uh, April two meter temperature anomalies here off the um, what is this off? Uh, let me have a look and see. I'm trying to see what the source of this is but certainly as, as tweet goes on to say it's the 11th warmest april since 1940 and fifth warmest january april period since um you know you know since 1945 it was also the first driest april since 1940 for spain 
second warmest on record for Spain. You can see here, of course, plenty of warmth as well as um, as dryness across. This is the precipitation pattern here. And you can see here, very, very dry compared to average. Um, it was also the second, I believe, for the, for the UK, by the way, and particularly so England, it was the second wettest March-April period since 1945, which is very, very interesting stuff. We've also seen quite a wet start of the month of May for this region as well. What kind of feedback is that going to have on the temperatures as we go into the early portion of the summer? That's going to be a very interesting question, but very wet for Central Europe, dry north, dry southwest, as you can see here, wettest compared to average in the UK across the south and the southeast of England, as you can see here, fairly wet across Northern Ireland, as well as the Northern Republic also here. So an interesting tweet, of course, by Brian, um, like I say, based in Anchorage, Alaska, or Fairbanks, Alaska, I think it may actually be. This was the global temperature uh, anomaly for April. So this is the ERA5 reanalysis, and this is the period between 1940 and 2023, fifth warmest on record, the warmest being 2016, uh, 2020, 2019, and 2017 for the globe overall. And March was the second warmest on record here. So slightly less warm compared to average uh, and compared to March, certainly, in terms of the temperature anomaly here. And like I say, the, the oceans have reached, I believe, a new peak as per some sources. Also, we've seen the first 21 of the year in England and also the warmest day of the year for the UK overall with 21.3 achieved at Sheffield yesterday afternoon. But all time record breaking heat has been achieved in several parts of Southeast Asia. Laos is the latest place to see a new all time record of 42.3 Celsius. Blame the strong subsidence of the Manjulian Oscillation Phase 8 back in April warmer than average sea surface temperatures, the La Nina that is now fading, all a contributing factor to why we're seeing such exceptional heat in parts of southeastern Asia, while at the same time we're seeing a very, very cool uh, start to May, and as well as that we had a cool April in much of India and Pakistan where we're seeing ongoing flooding. Very, very incredible warmth, 31 degrees Celsius achieved at Hay River, in northwestern territories of Canada. Very unusual to see such incredible warmth up here. In India, very cold temperatures. Temperature dropped to 15.8 Celsius, close to its record in New Delhi of 15.2 Celsius. This is a tweet by Extreme Temperatures Around the World, or indeed Maximiliano Herrera is the author of that Twitter page. But the incredible warmth, big contrasts, 30 plus Celsius in parts of Western Siberia and the far east of Russia versus the chill further south. But of course, further east, we've got incredible warmth as well. Mauritiana rose to 47 degrees Celsius, the hottest May day on record here. Uh, big contrast across parts of, uh, of Europe, as you can see, with incredible warmth, drought conditions across, uh, across Spain, enhancing that record breaking heat. Temperatures have been slow to warm up over the UK, but of course, with, with a, a wet March and April, as well as early uh, May also, it's going to be interesting to see the type of uh, pattern that we see as we go into the month of June and the beginning of summer. So stay tuned on marfogunweather.com. Here on YouTube as well, I will be looking at the, uh, the summer of 2023, releasing a forecast in the next uh, couple of weeks. Bangkok reached a new all-time record, 41 Celsius, also the warmest night in recorded history. Vietnam, 44.1 Celsius, the all-time, new all-time record for Vietnam. Very warm compared to average Japan and Taiwan, 33.4 and 40.1 40 respectively. We've also got incredible record heat across parts of, um, of Central America as well. And incredible cold across parts of the Balkan region also. So, uh, yeah, uh, do check out marfogunweather.com. Do check out my previous videos. Plenty of content for you to look at. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you again tomorrow, hopefully, with more. Bye for now.